Well, hey guys, I hope you are having a good week. It is fall time and maybe a lot of you are transitioned back into school and exams. It's a very stressful time. Um, I wanted to share with you, look, I brought out my cute little owl glass that I love to have in the fall. And I'm just sipping on my my Athletic Greens Ultimate Daily. I love having this every day. It's like my nutritional insurance. It's a nutrient-packed drink that I love to love to take every morning and it really kicks off my day to a good start. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about diet and acne. And a portion of today's video is in partnership with Athletic Greens. Click the link in the description box and you guys can get a free gift with your first Athletic Greens purchase if you are at all interested in checking out this drink but it's really delicious, it's really tasty. When it comes to your diet, it really can show up on your skin in the form of breakouts. This is really distressing. Acne is one of the most common skin conditions out there in both teenagers and in young adults and in older adults. And we're seeing an increasing incidence of acne worldwide. Over the last few decades, I would say Diet and acne has been one of the most fluid areas of dermatologic research. Back in the 70s, if you went to a dermatologist with acne, they would have told you, diet has nothing to do with it. That was the belief at that time. But data-driven research studies have opened up a world that has showed us that in fact, your diet may be playing a role in acne. Specifically, we have a lot of data, which I will chat with you guys about today, looking at how the glycemic index and glycemic load of our diets impacts our skin and is associated with acne and acne breakouts. What's clear from the data though, is that when it comes to diet and acne, it's not any one specific diet or pattern of eating, but probably specific components of a diet that exacerbate acne in people who already have acne at baseline. So I wanna make it clear that all the available data that we have at this point does not suggest in any way, shape or form that a food or an ingredient or a nutrient or a diet causes acne. Merely certain things can exacerbate acne in people who already have it. In contrast to the 70s, we now have rigorous studies that suggest an association between a high glycemic diet and acne. And we also have quite a few studies, although not as much, but quite a few studies looking at an association between dairy consumption and acne. One thing you will hear repeated over and over again is that acne is a consequence of a Western diet. Whereas in non-Westernized areas of the world, we don't see any acne. What exactly is a Western diet? A Western diet is typically high sugar and high sugar processed foods, a lot of refined carbohydrates, and also high fat and high in dairy consumption and high in protein consumption. Non-Westernized populations uh, trend towards like a paleolithic type diet where you don't have any dairy, it's very low sugar, no refined carbohydrates. There is virtually no acne, so that's compelling. And as I mentioned at the intro of the video, we're seeing an increased incidence in acne both in the US and worldwide. It seems to be increasing worldwide. Perhaps that is due to people adapting a more Western diet. It could also be due to things like genetic drift or differences in reporting as an increase in access to healthcare becomes available. More people are able to see a, a doctor and get a diagnosis and th that then gets reported. So it could be things like that. It, it might not all be acne related to diet, but you can't ignore that it likely is playing some sort of role. You have to look at it this way. Acne is multifactorial and we know that diet alone does not explain the disease by itself because we have twin studies that suggest about an 81% genetic association with acne. So a lot of it has to do with your genetics. But diet also can tip your acne towards a more severe scale and tend towards more breakouts depending on your diet. We all know the perfect diet does not exist. Our health is dynamic and honestly, our daily nutritional needs are gonna vary due to things like stress, sleep patterns, exercise, 
and our environment. Even with a well-balanced diet, sometimes it can be hard to get in all of your daily vitamins and minerals. Athletic Greens bridges that gap for me, and I love squaring away my nutritional needs every morning with their ultimate daily. It is a comprehensive all-in-one greens powder engineered to fulfill these nutritional gaps. It really supports your energy, recovery, gut health, and good immune function. It's 100% keto and paleo friendly, vegan, gluten-free, egg-free, nut-free, and dairy-free. What I love even more about it is that it is NSF certified for sport. Athletic Greens has met rigorous standards of testing and transparency with manufacturers to ensure that the formula is the highest quality with no compromises. It's packed with 75 absorbable vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced high quality ingredients, carefully selected for high potency and bioavailability. For me, it's a great way to square away my nutritional needs every morning. It's also really a wonderful choice for people who travel a lot and have a hard time getting in their nutritional needs while they're on the go, what with fast food and everything. And I love these little to-go pouches. I like carrying one in my bag. I find that having one of these after a workout or a really busy day, it really just helps keep me energized and on track with my wellness goals, helps with my stress levels. And you guys, I've tried a lot of these green powders and this one is one of the only ones that I've ever had that dissolves really easily in water and doesn't make clumps and it tastes really good. It has like a nice vanilla taste to it. I love to just have it in the shaker bottle. It's also really good in a glass if you wanna get fancy. And it combines the perfect amount of micronutrients, absorption, and taste to really jumpstart your daily routine. By the way, Athletic Greens is available not only in the U.S., but also Canada, U.K., and Europe. Click my link down below to get a free gift with your first Athletic Greens purchase. The available research that we have on diet and acne, specifically these high glycemic diets associated with more severe acne, it really has shifted the paradigm in thinking about acne pathogenesis towards a disease almost of a metabolic syndrome of the poor. What I mean by that is when you think of other diseases that manifest or are exacerbated by a similar mechanism of a high glycemic diet, obesity, cancer, diabetes, some of those same pathways, those metabolic pathways, are playing a role right at the level of your pore. I've always said this to you guys in my videos, it's very true. Your skin reflects what's going on inside. Your skin is an organ system and it's a window to what's going on inside. So acne showing up on your skin or being worsened by, by your diet, it's a clue that your diet probably is also causing other issues that you may not be aware of and may not show up until later on in life. Over the last few decades, a number of both observational and interventional studies have demonstrated a strong association between high glycemic index and glycemic load diets and acne severity. I keep saying high glycemic diet. What exactly is that? A high glycemic diet is one that it contains carbohydrates that are fast digesting, raise your blood sugar very quickly, and downstream from that, raise insulin levels. That feeds directly back to your pore. And the downstream effect of that increase in insulin, it binds to receptors in your pore and triggers skin cell proliferation that clogs up the pore. It triggers proliferation of the cells that make up your oil gland, enlarging the, the, enlarging the oil gland and resulting in more oil production. And it also upregulates inflammatory mediators. Another aspect of that increase in insulin-like growth factor is increase in androgen levels, which also bind to um, receptors within your pilosebaceous unit or your pore and drive acne even further. The glycemic index of a food really reflects how that food affects blood sugar. It's measured by giving, giving that uh, given carbohydrate to 10 individuals and then measuring their blood sugar later. But the glycemic load really is a little bit more of a refined measurement in that it takes into account the quality of the carbohydrate. The glycemic index and glycemic load values are available for over 2,000 different foods. 
The University of Sydney has a comprehensive database of these values. So I will put that reference down below in the description box for you guys. If you wanna check out how different foods vary in terms of their glycemic uh, loads. And you know, you'll, you can see on there how whole foods tend to be lower than you know, processed, refined carbohydrates. So you can get a sense of what foods in general are low versus high by using that tool. It's a very good resource in general. So I'll put that down below. But how does that play a role in, in acne? So several studies support that a high glycemic load, high glycemic index diet exacerbates acne severity. And there's a randomized control trial in which young males, I uh, believe the age range was 15 to 25, with acne were put on a either a standard high glycemic index western diet or a low glycemic high protein diet and at the end of the study the study was 12 weeks at 12 weeks the individuals on the low glycemic diet had a reduction in the number of acne lesions there's also a korean study that put uh, people on a low glycemic diet for 10 weeks and they show not only a reduction in severity of acne lesions, but also a reduction in, in oil gland size and a reduction in inflammatory mediators. Furthermore, in, in these studies, they've also shown uh, to kind of support the, the potential mechanism, they've also shown that on low glycemic diets, there is a reduction in free androgen levels and insulin-like growth factor. So really, it seems as though the high glycemic diet feeds into acne pathogenesis and people who, who have acne at baseline feeds into it by likely raising insulin levels. Insulin-like growth factor binds to receptors in the pore, triggers keratinocyte proliferation, which leads to plugging up of the pore, triggers sebocyte proliferation, which enlarges the pore, results in increased oil production, increased oiliness drives acne even further, and increases inflammatory mediators. These are some of the same signaling pathways and issues that also explain diseases like diabetes and cancer. So it's kind of this idea that a part of acne is almost a metabolic syndrome of the poor, which is really an interesting way to look at it. Um, again, like I said, the skin is a window to what's going on inside of the body and these processes that drive inflammation, they impact more than your skin. They impact other organ systems that you can't see. Um, and so, so it's really insightful what we've learned from these studies. Furthermore, there is a medication that is used to treat type 2 diabetes called metformin that, that targets insulin signaling. And interestingly, there are some studies that show that metformin results in improvement in acne severity, uh, suggesting it as a potential treatment. Um, but it's, it, you know, it's interesting that a diabetes medication would show promise for treating acne. So it really suggests a strong role for high glycemic foods in exacerbating acne. I wanna make that clear though. Uh, you know, it's not like this type of, like switching your diet over to a low glycemic diet. It's not going to cure your acne. It's not, it's not going to, but it, it may result in fewer acne lesions and a reduction in overall acne severity. Uh, doing so and that can make all of the difference if you're already on an acne treatment and getting suboptimal results perhaps a dietary modification could push you to uh, the end point of, of getting the kind of control that you're looking for improving you know your mood your overall outlook on things it really I means simple changes to your diet can really help so check out the University of Sydney to get a better understanding of what foods you might be ingesting and how they you know what their relative glycemic loads are. It's not to say that you've got to like completely cut out sugar and you know go on this extreme path, but I encourage you if you are coping with acne to really reflect on your diet choices and how they may be playing a role. So that's the glycemic index, glycemic load story. What about dairy? We hear all the time dairy 
and acne. This is something that has shown up time and time again in various retrospective and prospective studies dating from 2005 to 2008. And a recent meta-analysis actually looking at all of the available research really did affirm an association between bovine dairy milk consumption and acne severity. However, the association was not there for yogurt or cheese. So it's not as though all dairy is, is responsible. It seems as though it's the bovine milk, milk specifically. And there are a few theories as to why that might be. Uh, perhaps the milk increases insulin and insulin like growth factor kind of contributing to the same issues that I mentioned with the glycemic, high glycemic diet. Or, and or there's also bovine insulin-like growth factor in the milk, and milk contains dihydrotestosterone precursors that could further contribute to, to acne. Our endocrine system, which are our hormones, are something that communicates with our skin, and increasing androgen levels in both men and women drive seborrhea or oiliness and contribute to acne and also drive that that proliferation of the oil gland cells. If you're looking for a low glycemic, dairy-free beverage, check this out, really delicious. I can tell you guys that it's clear there is certainly an association with worse acne and a high glycemic diet. Modifying your diet away from a high glycemic one in favor of more low glycemic foods may help reduce the severity of acne. It won't cure it though. Likewise, we have studies that suggest that dairy milk consumption, but not all dairy in general, so not yogurt, not cheese, also can be associated with worse acne. And so for those of you out there who have acne and are struggling and things are not getting better despite treatment, modifying your diet might help get you better results. Um, in comparison to maybe if you are consuming a lot of sugary processed foods and you're on treatment and it's just not quite doing it, maybe modifying things. The key is you have to stick it out for at least 12 weeks too uh, to, see, to see results. So don't expect to change your diet for a few weeks and then your acne to go away. Uh, nothing works that quickly. But you know, after 12 weeks, you might begin to see an improvement in the health of your skin. But importantly, Favor, a diet that favors low glycemic foods over high glycemic foods, it has benefit to your overall health as well. So now more than ever is the time to take control of your health, make some changes in your diet. I just wanted to share with you guys the Athletic Greens website. It's really easy to navigate. So definitely head on over there, check it out. You guys are gonna love it. Thank you Athletic Greens for sponsoring a portion of today's video. If you guys are at all interested in trying out this delicious green drink, definitely take advantage of my link in the description box. You can get a free gift with your first order, which is always, always a win. I love it. It is the best part of my morning and I also adore having it after an intense workout. Um, anyways guys, I hope you liked this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.